It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it is time for another First Thoughts and Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on Inheritor Amaki, the first specialty change of 2024. Fun fact, no year in Epic 7 has had less than three specialty changes. If 2018 could put out three specialty changes in three months, I'm sure SG will be doing just fine. As always with these videos, I'll be giving my two cents on the character. Do I think they're good? Where would I play them? What types of gear and artifact I'd play them on? All those things you've come to expect in an impressions video. Before we jump into Amaki's S3 animation, if you enjoy this style of video, leave a like or subscribe. It does help me out here a ton, and it costs you absolutely nothing. Anyways, with the intro out of the way, let's take a look at that S3 animation. Whatever you got, bring it. What are you doing? Well... You're ready to die! Don't think you're leaving alive. Once again, the Epic 7 art team is just carrying. There's a couple of things that are a little bit off with the S3 animation. It feels cheap in some places, specifically where she's like sliding along the ground. But otherwise, it's a pretty sick composition overall, and I really do like that animation. Amaki's English voiceover artist is Emily Iden, by the way. She's most well known for being in the 2016 reboot of Voltron, as well as various different theater performances and audiobooks. Before moving on to the specialty change itself, as a refresher for those of you who forgot, Amaki is an ice warrior of the Scorpio Zodiac symbol. She basically has the three star stat line of the collab hero, Rem. Taking a look at her stat line, she has 1019 attack, 571 defense, 5,738 health, 98 speed, 15% critical at chance, 150% critical at damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. Similarly, let's revisit her kit because, well, basically the specialty change is just going to be talking about the modifications that the kit is going to be getting. So again, why not revisit the base kit, starting with the skill one in Divine Punishment. It is a single target attack with a 0.6x attack multiplier. Attacks the enemy with a sword and has a 50 to 75% chance, depending on skill level, to provoke the target for one turn. Cannot trigger a critical hit and penetrates the target's defense by 30%. After attacking, when the caster's health is 30% or less, grants an extra attack with the same skill. So essentially, if she uses Divine Punishment when under 30% health, she will use Divine Punishment a second time afterwards. Skill 2 is kind of an interesting one. It is Desperate Resolve. You acquire two souls upon use, and it has a 6-9 to nine turn cooldown depending on skill level. It is a non-attack skill that grants immortality for one turn and attack buff for two turns to Amaki. Upon receiving lethal damage when this skill is available according to cooldown count, grants the same effects to Amaki and fully increases the cooldown of this skill. Essentially, this is a passive that has an activated component if you decide to use it early, basically meaning that you have full agency over when it actually triggers. You can use it offensively to trigger other effects in Amaki's kit, or it could just function as a passive, but because it is technically considered an activated ability, it actually cannot be sealed, unlike other characters. And finally, we come to Amaki's skill 3, which is upgraded from her specialty change. It is Strike of Vengeance. It has a 3 to 4 turn cooldown depending on skill level. It is a single target attack with a 1.1x attack multiplier and cannot trigger a critical hit. A successful attack deals damage proportional to Amaki's attack to all enemies. It penetrates the target's defense by 30% and when Amaki's health is 30% or less, penetrates the target's defense by 70% instead. When Amaki is immortal, this skill grants an extra turn. Soulburn for the cost of 10 souls changes the multiplier from 1.1x attack to 1.5x attack. Now that you understand the kit, you should have a pretty good idea of how this character functions. Amaki is essentially Blue Kairon, but on the Warrior class. She gets Immortality when she goes to 1 HP, just like Red Kairon. And while she has that Immortality and low HP, her attacks get significantly stronger. Since she wants to spend as much time in Immortality as possible... Building things like health, defense, and speed, they feel nearly pointless. They just take away from what her core game plan, I feel like, should be. Counter set and penetration set are going to be the ideal sets, I think, for her to take advantage of her kit. You want to have her get hit by things like maybe a straight AoE, go into Immortality, and start reaping the benefits of having 2x attack with Divine Punishment every time you get a counter. 
as soon as it's your turn, you just use that skill three for big damage, take an extra turn, and then see who you can pick off with, again, your 2x Divine Punishment skill one. As for artifacts on the character, Uberius' Tooth and El's Fist seem like pretty good options for her. Since Amaki can't actually critically strike and doesn't want any bulk or speed as we previously established, you're really only going to be investing in attack on this character and maybe effect resistance and that's about it. Any character that's going to try to break 5k attack should consider Uberius' Tooth as this is when it starts to do pretty significant damage. Alternatively, El's Fist, again, that seems like a pretty good option. The speed increase that it gives does hurt Amaki, but as long as you're at 1% health, she's going to get that nice, chunky 60% attack bonus, which could be absolutely devastating to opponents, and kind of lets her function like a pseudo BBK when you think about it. She's going to be hitting really hard and be super fast, just like Karin. So now that we have a base game plan, let's take a look at the 10 runes that Amiki gets from her specialty change and see how they change that game plan. First up is the Courage rune. It increases Amiki's attack by 20%. This takes her from 1019 base attack up to 1178, which is great, but it's still sadly below the 1208 that the five star Scorpio Warrior stat line has. That said, I'm not complaining. It's a great change for the character. Having 1178 attack does help a lot when you consider that this is the only stat that the character actually wants to build. It's not like Judge Kise where she only has like, you know, a thousand or so and it's really difficult to build damage on the character. You should easily be able to break 4,000 attack on this character. In fact, if you wear an attack percentage necklace, ring, and boots with no other attack subs, that should give you 4,000 attack on the nose or at least very close to it. Again, really great rune change for this character. Sadly, I don't think I could say the same about the next two runes, which are the Speed Rune and the Relic Rune. These give Amaki a total increase of 9 base speed. That sounds really good on paper until you realize that the character wants to stay in Immortality as long as possible. People do not build speed on their counter k for a reason. I suspect skipping these runes and having Amaki at plus 24 might actually be the best way to play the character. Unless for some reason taking a turn becomes super important on her. And even then we have Els Fist as an option. So yeah, me personally, I think skipping these runes, at least until we know for sure that they are worth the pickup, is going to end up being the play. Next up is runes that affect Strike of Vengeance. This is Amaki's skill 3. First up is the Obscurity rune. It increases the damage dealt by Strike of Vengeance by 10%. That's fine. We'll take any damage that we can get on the character. The move already has a 1.1x multiplier. This would basically increase it to about a 1.21x multiplier. So, you know, it's a 1.2x basically as the multiplier now on the move. Still, this is a little bit lacking. Characters with higher attack, right? Like Remnant Violet, right? They have higher base penetration rate and they have significantly higher damage multipliers than this. Yeah, I know it's an ML5, but... Still, this is a little bit lacking unless you get that 70% extra penetration rate. Like, if you don't get that 70% pen rate, it's kind of lacking. And even then, in the face of characters like Empyrean Illinav, I don't really know how much damage this does. Like, it's still a welcome change, but it's not exactly ridiculous. The next move, though, the next rune here, Guard Rune, this thing is potentially just busted. Like, absolutely busted. And we'll talk about why it is and why it also probably isn't. So Garrune states, when using Strike of Vengeance, if the caster is immortal, has a 100% chance to reset the cooldown of Desperate Resolve. So this would mean that if it was a three-turn cooldown, if Strike of Vengeance is a three-turn cooldown, like it originally was pre-specialty change, you could put this character on Prophetic Candlestick, and then when she goes into Immortality, use S3, take an extra turn, and then use her S1. And then if she gets hit again, she goes back into Immortality because of the Guard Rune. And if you proc Prophetic Candlestick one time, it is an infinite loop. That's really broken. And if that is the case, then that needs to be fixed. The thing is, though, Strike of Vengeance, as it says here on the slide in the top right, acquires two souls upon use and has a six-turn cooldown. I have never seen a cooldown increase with a specialty change for a move as far as I am aware. So which is it? If it's a six turn move, no problem. Character's still great as is up to until this point. 
But if the character actually has a three turn cooldown after max skill level on this thing, then we potentially have a problem on our hands. For now, I'm going to operate under the assumption that it is a six turn cooldown because that is what it says here on the slide. Moving on, we have runes that involve Desperate Resolve, this being the skill two. First up is Glory Rune. When using Desperate Resolve, dispels all dealers from the caster before the effect. This is great. If you don't want to build effect resistance on the character, this is a way for her to actually get a turn in Immortality. Just know that after you proc the dispel, you are vulnerable again until you make it to your actual turn. So maybe we don't go entirely no effect resistance on the character. I leave that to you to decide what you want to do, but this is still a huge boon to the character. It's something that a character like BBK or k -Ron doesn't have access to, so that's very good. Next up is Fruition Rune. When using Desperate Resolve, increases the combat radius of the caster by 30%. Who designed some of these runes, man? Like, I don't want to speed up. I want to be as slow as possible. I want to sit in immortality as long as possible. I want to reap the benefits of the counters and being in that immortal state as long as possible. Speeding me up actually just actively hurts the character. Moving on to runes for divine punishment here. We have the harvest rune, which increases the damage dealt of divine punishment by 10%. It's fine. We take it. Move already has a pretty bad multiplier at 0.6x attack. Getting 10% more... It's like 0 0.65, 0 0.66, sure. Like, again, it's fine, but it's not amazing. Moving on to Wedge Rune. Increases Divine Punishment's chance to provoke by 25%. This is actually great because Divine Punishment only has a 75% chance to proc provoke. So now you have a 100% chance for this character to provoke you. I could see dedicating some effectiveness to the character now because of the fact that we have a provoke. And I think when we talk about the last rune here in Unity Rune, it'll also become apparent that some effectiveness could be pretty good. Unity Rune states when an ally except for the caster is attacked, has a 15% chance to counterattack. So, character just has Elbrus Ritual Sword built in. So if they AoE against you, that's super great if you're the Amiki player. You can proc the Unity Rune, get a 100% chance to provoke and have them kind of go into you to potentially proc uh, counter set or immortality if you already don't have it. Right? And if they attack you and you proc counter and you go into immortal, then you get those two basic attack skills, which is really, really good. It's exactly what this character wants. And I think that it's probably the best overall rune in the character's kit, aside from the guard rune, which we still have to see if it's a three turn or a six turn cooldown. To wrap up the video and my impressions overall on Amiki, I think she's overall a really hard character to evaluate properly. Her damage seems pretty lackluster compared to similar units like Kron or Bloodblade Karin. At least that's what the multipliers suggest on paper. Perhaps getting two so so skill ones back to back makes up for it because, well, you get multiple of them and they just happen to have some penetration. Perhaps her S3 having 70% defense pen when she's low on health, that could also make up for the subpar multiplier. All this, of course, assuming that you're not fighting Illinat. I think the character's saving grace is going to be in how simple she is to gear, though. She really only wants one stat, and that is attack percentage. Effect resistance or effectiveness seems like they could be good or useful on the character, but I don't know if they're entirely necessary. Since this character, though, is 3-star, trivially easy to gear, and is nearly guaranteed a turn, I expect her to be a pretty popular character to pick up. She seems like a pretty solid anti-cleave unit and might even be pretty good in things like, say, Guild War offense against some of these Bloodblade Karin Guild War defenses that we've been seeing a ton of as of late. The one thing, though, about this character that sits in the back of my head still is that skill 3 cooldown. The slide says 6 turns, but the base character has a 3 turn cooldown on the skill 3. Slides have been wrong in Smilegate's videos in the past, and I don't ever recall making the cooldown of a specialty change that much higher. They've never really increased it. The closest we've ever had to something like that has been Falcon or Clurry's nerf from years back, but I'm pretty sure the base unit still had that same cooldown increase applied. If Amiki releases tomorrow with a three-turn cooldown on her skill three, then this unit is probably broken. Otherwise, I think she's going to be a fairly solid PvP unit that everyone has access to, and therefore, you should absolutely be building. And overall, those are just my thoughts on Amiki. Let me know down in the comments below how you feel about her specialty change. 
And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.